the first 91,000. 91,000, we are getting there so good, so good. Hi my friends, Pat Sloan here. It is Thursday and we are kicking off the uh, Jolly Bar book for Quilt Along, which is a sampler using blocks from the book. <clears throat> we also have our next week, what is it, week four <clears throat> of the Butterfly Quilt. So that is a, that's a full day, it's a full day. Let's first start with, <laughs> let's first start with the Butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> all right so here is all of the ones whoops that's always fun so here are my units for this week but I'm going to walk you through um, being sure you get the right fabrics and uh, show you where I traded some out for some of the other tulip pink fabric that I have let's go to the other side it's an easy week for the butterfly quilt yay does anybody else do that when they see an easy week they're like yes so we are just doing some strip sets just rectangles couple rectangles you're done yeah oh, okay so we're doing rectangles that are where are they at there's a little set here then we're doing this long grouping down here and then there's another little one somewhere oh yeah right here all right so let's take a look we will look look a duck a duck a duck ah on the master plan the master plan and remember this is one side of your butterfly so you're making two of everything because it's identical on the other side. Nothing is directional, so you're just making duplicates. Uh, we're doing this section, this, this section, and this section. So up here, these pinks are two solids. So this kind of very kind of purpley pink here, and then this darker pink. And what I am going to do is trade out Originally I thought, oh, maybe I would do this, but that doesn't give that light dark. So I'm going to do this, because I'm gonna put in a little bit of what I have. So I will do those two for this little section right up here. And then next we have uh, two sections here. One with, both with this pink, uh, well, I don't know, it's kind of a gemstone thing, whatever. Uh, but we're gonna do it with this light purple and then with this sort of persimmon it's like a little bit more reddish so we'll do one set with the pink and one you know with the this light pink and one set with the persimmon and i am going to actually switch out to this dot so that was one of the other pieces in the collection so i'm going to switch out and use that instead of the solid just to spice it up a little bit and then the last one we do will be this set the orange and kind of the orangey rusty solid and that strip set okay that's it that is that is all for this week two of each of those sets which uh, are right there in your pattern so you're just doing those four sets easy peasy lemon squeezy <laughs> So this was a very fast week, which means that I am going to plan, I'll probably film in chunks doing the next week. I'm gonna to try to do that during the week now uh, so that I can get ahead a bit. I'm also still having to write patterns for our Black Wednesday. And so I'm trying to balance all that stuff and, and have some other life things, the things that aren't work related that I do. <laughs> now the next thing is the kickoff of the Jolly Bar Sampler. These are always so fun to do because the book has such great patterns in it and they're all given to be a full quilt and with the sampler we just take um, some of the blocks uh, with the Fat Quarter Shop and lay it out. So I've got, I'm going through what the project is on the other side and the blocks for today. So this is a pretty quick one. You're going to do two a week. So let's go, let's go back over there. You'll need your book some fabric, two Jolly Bars, and we're off and running for the Jolly Bar so long. Let me just do the mechanics, sort of show you what is out there, and then show you the two, I'm gonna show you the fabric and how I sort of thought about it and, and pre-planned a little bit. Uh, Bobby helped me sew the blocks, so there was a little bit of, you know, back and forth. You know, she lives in Wisconsin, I live in Virginia, and I appreciate, she's one of our ambassadors, I appreciate her help so much, because right now I'm doing quite a few sew-alongs, and so she's helping with a few of them by sewing the blocks. Okay, let's take a look at fabric. So I 
went with uh, this Jolly Bar. First, let me show you the Jolly Bar. It is called uh, Beautiful Day by Cory Yoder. It came with this free pattern. Isn't that gorgeous? That is just so gorgeous. And that free pattern, when you buy this one, of course you have to add a lot of background, but it just uses the one Jolly Bar. So, and create it's a 72 by 72 quilt, and that's huge. Uh, so here's the Jolly Bar. It has pinks and reds, and then some lighter, you know, in between, a lot of lighter in this. It has a few greens, uh, gray, so lighter grays, okay. And then uh, it has this sort of taupey gray, which is really pretty, I like it. And then a lot of cream, a lot, a lot of cream. So cream backgrounds, like maybe a third of the line is, I'll put this with the taupes, I'll put the pretty one on top so you can look at the pretty one. So this is, oops, another taupe. So I would call this the, the kind of cream section, it's quite a few. Oh, beautiful, right? Okay, so then I decided I wanted to try a, a um, basic by Benertex, and this is called the Shot Cotton. It is a printed, it is not like some other Shot Cottons which are actually like a woven. This is just a regular printed cotton, but it has that sort of texture in it of a Shot Cotton. And um, I, I thought I would try it, and it looks really good. Now, I have these, you know, creams. I wanted something very springy looking. So the grays, the reds, the pinks, uh, yeah, everything, everything has to go in this quilt. So all of this will go, there we go. So I thought this would be really cool to use this sort of aqua, it's called mint on their website, I think. I'm linking you to the website so you can just take a look at all the shot cotton shades. Um, but there you go, so that is what I did. Now. I <clears throat> did a little bit of planning. It takes two layer cakes, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, two um, Jolly Bars, which is one layer cake. So you can take one layer cake and make from this. It also has like an accent fabric and some background, all the supply lists and everything you can get uh, to download. We've had it for a while. So if you're just now deciding you wanna jump in, you can get this. Uh, and if you've got a layer cake, this is perfect. It lets you just use the layer cake instead of two Jolly Bars. The book has things for one Jolly Bar, two Jolly Bars, and maybe three Jolly Bars. Uh, this is their fourth book in the series. All the blocks are here in the front. So because I, uh, you know, we see the layout and I know that there's only so much fabric, you know, and, and they're in, you know, so there's only going to be two of these, one from each Jolly Bar. And if you have a layer cake, there's still just that, you know, the one that you've, you don't need to cut them in half if you have the layer cake, just work with the layer cake. Um, so I thought I would do a little bit of planning and here are some photos. So what I first did was kind of group them and then I did I took the book and did sort of like each um, uh, block, took that all the fabric and kind of laid it out by block as to where I think I'm going to use it. Now it, it didn't, you know, things did change a little bit, but for the most part, I stuck with that plan. Uh, being a sampler and the way it is, uh, you know, the colors will all be sort of, you know, moved around. I thought, I thought about that. I didn't want to put all the reds in one corner. You know, like if I've got the blocks up here, I wanted to be sure they weren't all red. You know, so you have to think about that a little bit. So in a planning this sampler, there is, I, I feel it was, it's more successful if you have a little bit of thought process in advance so that you're not sort of stuck at the end with having made all of these ones in this upper corner red and you didn't really want to do that. You know, you want to spread the red around the whole thing. Um, you know, and the, the schedule is here. So you have a schedule, so you know exactly what blocks and what day they're going to be. Uh, and it's a fairly quick qu uh, quilt along. We end in um, March. March is the last, you know, beginning of March, middle of March is the end of it. Now, I wanna tell you that as you're working, you're going to create cutaways. Keep all of these. Sew them up, okay? Let me just show you one. Take your cutaways, sew them so that you get these half square triangles. And I am, haven't done it yet, but I'm going to design a border with these half square triangles. I just need to look at a common size. So these look like they're probably gonna be like about, I don't know, what's, I'm not gonna say what size because then you'll trim and I won't have designed anything and then you'll be messed up. So 
<laughs> like, let me design it, the border, and I'll do that in the next um, you know, week or so. But keep these and we'll do a border around and that will be sort of, and, and you'll be using them then. The actual quilt without a border, the just as done, is 66 by 84. So it's a really nice, great lap quilt. And then this will make it another, you know, maybe six inches um, wider and longer to do a border around it. Okay, what about my blocks? What about my blocks, Pat? You're like all oh, telling me the fabric. Let's see the blocks. <laughs> is that what you're thinking? You gotta be prepared though. This is one that I think if you put a little thought into it, you will be much happier. Okay, so the first block, where is it? The first block that we're doing is the Shirley Temple. That's the Shirley Temple, and there it is in repeat for the book. And we're just doing one block. So it is a churn dash with some little cut off corners. I mean, little, um, yeah, little corners that are just darling. So isn't that cute? Look at this fabric and that pink with that um, sort of aqua, this light aqua, ah, so cute. And then the second one we're doing is the whoopsie, whoopsie daisy. Okay, and here's the whoopsie daisy. And there you can see it in repeat. And this takes just, is this, no, this takes two Jolly Bars. If you want to make this whole quilt, which is 72 by 72, two Jolly Bars or a layer cake. This is darling. I would love to make this quilt. Maybe my, maybe the horse quilt, the horse fabric. There is the block for the beautiful day uh, fabric line. So once again, it's just, this one's just two fabrics and this one is just two fabrics. And I'm sticking to the plan of the book because I don't want to mess up and have, you know, no Jolly Bar for something. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That is how I'm approaching the Jolly Bar Sampler. We will be doing this on Thursdays along with the Butterfly Quilt. Uh, so it'll be a busy Thursday. I am not doing a blog post on Thursdays. So that means I will share the pictures, my pictures on Facebook and Instagram. And then on Friday, well, I will add them to my blog. For the Friday, Socialites will have a photo of these two projects from today as well. That way, I only want to do blog posts Monday, Wednesday, Friday, unless it's something unusual. It's a lot more work to do that. And so, um, you know, that's just the plan for me. Okay, let's go back to the other side. <laughs> I am loving how this is going to go. The These are such pretty fabrics, so, so gorgeous. They're just soft and springy and I think I'll be able to hang it in my wall on my wall in the hallway for a while to enjoy it like up to my staircase that's where I'm kind of planning to put this one and remember keep those half square triangles that you cut off any any of those cutoffs keep that pile because I will do a uh, layout using I'll put those on the round the outside so we just have uh, we use them up and use them use them there okay I have a little mail call this is from oh wait I have a little mail call and the first one is from Pam in uh, Michigan. So Pam uh, wrote and said that she had was looking through her magazines and found several of them that have my designs in them and that she wanted to send them to me. So that is so sweet of you. Thank you so much. Uh, so I'll just, here is one. I think I showed that one. Did I show that one recently? The Holly? Yeah, so, and then she also had found an article in here about uh, library quilts. This article about a, a man who had done things with ties. So his library quilt was done with ties. And this is back in 2004. So I mean, library quilts, the concept of those has been around a very long time. So thank you, Pam. <laughs> and the other one is from Sandy in Florida. And she sent me this, uh, oh, look at that, with the unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she said she just saw the Have a Magical Day. Yes, I'm always talking about the unicorns because I just think it makes things more fun. And then she sent me a wonderful Starbucks card with the Year of the Rabbit for the Chinese New Year that is coming up on this weekend. I love the rabbit. And I'm working on that cross stitch. And I'm actually, oh, I can't reach it. But it's coming along. I'm getting, I'm up to the numbers. So I will try to remember to show you that next next video so tomorrow's video so a little q a so i want to 
particularly these are um, a lot of these are related to what we're talking about right now and I'm grabbing them all off of YouTube that's where I'm getting the questions when I can find them okay so Ben asked when I showed my boxes of Orifil thread he was wondering if they were all 50 weight and do I generally use 50 weight and so yes I do the orange spools are the 50 weight thread I use this for piecing I use it for machine quilting for binding hand binding uh, I use it for a, a machine applique. I have used it uh, for hand applique. They have a do, little bit thinner weight thread now that you might like for hand applique to try. And so this is my go-to and what I mostly have. Okay, Pam asked, she said, this may be an odd question. It's not really, Pam, it's okay. The rulers that have yellow or another color on them, is that supposed to peel off? Uh, so not, she said, lines versus peel off paper well there are there are some rulers that have yellow lines uh, but then there's also things like this that have paper on the back and so when you just look at the front it's it's actually also a green plastic just like this plastic See, this plastic is green but there's no paper on it you know this didn't come with paper so this paper is meant to peel off so you use the ruler without it if there's just yellow lines that is your lines for working with so don't you can't peel those off or don't try um linda asked i have a question for you what is the name of the lance the lance lanyard like boa that quilters wear around their neck that holds scissors and threads and needles and etc it's a french name that starts with a c she just says, is that a chatelaine? Yes, it's a chatelaine. A chatelaine uh, come in so many different ways. I think, do I can? Yeah, here's mine. This is a very simple chatelaine because it doesn't have a lot of extra, but it is holding a thimble case, you know, a thimble cage. So open that, you keep your thimble in there and a wool pin cushion. And I would wear this around my neck, but the other chatelaines have all kinds. They might be cloth. They might have pockets. They might have pin cushions on them. And then there are fancy metal chatelaines. They were um, used back, I guess, way long time ago, medieval times, Victorian times. I don't know what the ladies would carry it and have keys, a lot of keys and other things, rather than like a purse, they would use these chatelaines. And then they eventually seem to morph into sewing. And I'm sure you could do some research on and, and get the history behind it. Bella Ann asked, I have a beautiful collection of thread. If I had to downsize to a very small room, like a closet, like if I had to downsize all of this to a closet, what piece of furniture would you want to use to maximize storage and the ability to cut your fabric? No matter what I'm keeping, my table that fits my sewing machine, but the rest I'm struggling with. Well, that is, um, you know, if you're having to go to a very small space and you're coming from a very large space, you can you know, you might want to have somebody come and help you figure that out in person because they're going to need to ask you questions about what are you doing? What's your work? What are you going to be doing in the new space? Um, you know, it's not something that you can just have a blanket statement as to what will fit you. Um, it really is going to be really particular. Like if you have to cut, maybe there's a table that can be pulled down and so it can go back up on the wall afterwards and not take up space. Um, maybe it can fold into your and come out of your closet. Uh, you might need to have somebody build some things for you that will work um, because a cutting space is super important, a space to cut. I mean, I have seen people where they go and cut in their kitchen on the kitchen counter because for many people, the kitchen counter is a proper height uh, and they just have to keep a section of the kitchen counter clean. I, somebody in our community showed their mom when she moved into a very small um, you know, efficiency place that she did her cutting on the kitchen counter. So you, you know, I would suggest maybe you talk to somebody locally, like an organizer or something like that, that could help you work through the options for you and to what you want to do and how you want to use that new space. Uh, Catherine says she's interested in my labels because she noticed that they're regular blocks, but I don't, she didn't, couldn't figure out where I'm going to write anything. So let me just show you the holiday homies one. This is perfect. I have it. It's going to go in the back. I purposely did white right here. That is where I'm going to put my label information, my name, my address, or my city, my name, my city, the date of when I finished it, which would be this month, because I'm going to be putting the binding on here any day, maybe tonight. <laughs> and then if I want to put um, the fabric line, I did just add this strip at the top. I cut the salvage off with the holiday homies and just sewed it down. Uh, raw edge because you know how the salvages are so I put that on there for the label 
So this is it. When you do a cute label, leave some white space. Use the background of a block or something like that. All right, my friend, you have two fun things. Your butterfly stuff and our blocks for uh, the, <laughs> the, the Jolly Bar. These are so cute. These are so cute. This is going to be so much fun. So I love you. Mwah. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. I will see you next time.